man wasn't even spotted. Perfect gameplay, Gaijin. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. With the rollout of patch 2.7, we have had a couple of interesting changes to top tier jets and top tier combat specifically. A couple of changes that have been kinda shit, to be honest. It's been a fairly stressful time playing top tier, and these sort of mechanics that have come around have really driven that frustration to the top. It's been really, really tough to actually get footage. It's been tough to play the game and enjoy it because of these couple of things. And this is kind of what I want to talk to talk about today. But of course, before we do that, I would always love to plug Air Models. These are my channel partners. These guys have been with me for a fairly long time now. And honestly, they produce some pretty damn good stuff. They are a basically a retailer for static models. And um, I've had a couple of them for maybe nine months now, and they're both pretty damn nice. So if you'd like to head down to this description below, maybe you could pick up the lightning that's on screen right now. I'll leave that as a link in the description below as well. So with that out of the way, I just want to quickly talk about a couple of quick topics before we sort of take it into the get into the meat and veg of this, if you will. So the first one is the grind. A lot of people have been starting to talk about the grind again, about how much RP it is to unlock certain vehicles, and of course it's starting to get to a point where it is a little bit excessive. This is the kind of stuff that happens every two or three years with War Thunder. They always adjust the grind around, I think it's about October, uh, but around this sort of June, July type area, a lot of people start to realize that the grind is not where it should be. And it is kind of frustrating. So what I would suggest is perhaps a little bit of patience. It will be in a couple of months, but of course, do not let your voice go unheard. Make sure you let the, the devs know through perhaps forums or Reddit if you believe that the grind is getting too excessive, I think it's starting to edge on that. But next patch, I think everyone will start to feel the pinch. Anyway, with that out of the way, we are going to be talking about premiums here. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is the F5C spam and the Harrier GR1 spam that we have known over the last few months. The GR1s, whilst the spam has died down because it's no longer a... Uh, I think it was a 9.0 when it was introduced, I can't quite remember, or a 9.3. And uh, my god, it was an absolute nightmare because a lot of people just couldn't fight this thing. I mean, it was very tough, and I don't blame the community, but this plane was one hell of a beast in the right hands. And of course, it provided a lot of frustration, and people gravitated towards it. So now, it fights top tiers. And for me, that is the problem. That is the main issue that should be addressed by Gaijin. Now, I've been a vocal, uh, like, uh, I've uh, opposed this so vocally over the last five years. Ever since the IS-6 was a thing, I have voiced my opinion on this type of stuff, where the IS-6 was jumping into top-tier combat, and other planes and other tanks have slowly followed suit. The FGA-9 was one, and there are multitudes of others. The Harriers at 9.7 only recently stopped seeing top-tier combat, and for me, I would like to see this stop completely. With the F5C, I think this should be the last plane to see top tier combat as a full premium. This is the kind of stuff that really frustrates long term players, but more so frustrates the people that have bought it and are under experienced. There are plenty of players that I have seen that have maybe a couple hundred games of RB at best, and now they're being thrown into top tier combat because they've bought themselves a shiny new F5C with the MiG-28 skin, and that's all good and well to make some money off that, but should it be at a battle rating where it's going to face top tier? If it if it should be because it's powerful enough, then why was it added when it was? I, I think, in my opinion, it should have been added later down the line, or alternatively, there should no be no more additions like this in the future because at this t at this rate we could get a premium F4 Phantom and it could be facing top tier combat with F16s. Can you imagine a nice big fat heavy fighter fighting against super agile things like uh, Su27s, F16s, all these types of really lightweight things and really maneuverable things? It's just not going to be fun and people are going to get slaughtered and it's not going to be a good way to grind. Premiums are supposed to be the key into top tier, but 
they're not supposed to be the gameplay. They're supposed to be the means to acquire that. And what Gaijin's done here is they've kind of just gone straight for the hype train and cashed in. And whilst, of course, you do that as a business, it's not a great way to bring about good gameplay. Because these types of players that gravitate towards nice new shiny premiums that don't have any experience are going to play a couple of games in the F5C, get shafted, and then go, you know what, fuck this, I'm just going to stick to custom battles. Or, you know what, they're not even going to play the plan at all. And for me, that is a problem. And on top of that, they're going to drag down the players that are maybe phantom players who have have to deal with teams that are full of people that, you know, not exactly the best players. Or alternatively, MIG teams where you're just slaughtering all day or, you know, vice versa, where your team is just being cleaned up by OP fighters like the Harrier used to be. These are the types of situations that I want to avoid, and I want to see Gaijin try and make an effort to avoid this type of stuff in the future. Moving on, we have the good old spotting system. For those of you that don't know what I refer to when I refer to the spotting system, it is the markers that pop up in RRB for players. I'm going to include missiles here, but we're going to talk about missiles in a little bit afterwards. So the spotting system, you are flying around at maybe 4,000 meters, you look around, nothing, nothing to be seen, and then you turn 180 degrees, oh look, there's a MiG-21 BIS on your ass, and you get an R60 straight up. Back to the hangar, repair cost, and uh, start again, hope for a better run next time. For me, this is complete bullshit. I honestly don't understand why Gaijin would do something like that. For me, it's either a bug, a server issue, or there is something completely wrong. There's no good gameplay, there are no positives to having this. Because as easy as it is to sneak up on someone like that, if it's happening to you, it's really, really frustrating. And as someone who has played a lot of top tier, and as someone who really enjoys top tier and those high tier jet combat uh, types of, of gameplay, it is absolutely break game breaking. It really frustrates someone that either knows what they're doing or is careful because they're trying to be careful or they're trying to be modest. They're trying not to throw away their plane and they turn around and all their hard work is immediately undone because I don't know. I genuinely don't know where this is coming from. In the background, you might just be seeing some footage of this happening. It's happened to me so much, and of course, it's really, really annoying. I would absolutely love for this to stop, and how would I suggest this type of thing? Well, the first thing I would suggest is a set radius of things that are just auto-spotted within a certain radius, and that radius being very close to or on par with the radius of the missiles that are effective at that tier. So for example, at uh, higher tiers where you're looking at a three and a half kilometer range, I would say uh, for, for like most missiles in a chase, I would suggest a four kilometer spotting range all around period without any other considerations. No consideration of weather or climate as in like clouds and stuff like that. I think just a blanket four kilometer bubble where you are completely spotting absolutely everything in that bubble. And for me, that would mean that players that are dying from things like missiles would have to be dying because they're not paying attention to their little radar up on the top of the screen, or maybe they're just distracted, or maybe they're, you know, sitting on Reddit while they're climbing. But um, these types of players would be the ones that would suffer, not the players that actually put effort into learning the game, or put effort into playing cautiously, or put effort into not throwing away their plane. These would be the players that benefit from that. And I think that that's a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are disagreeing with me, do let me know in the comments section below. Give me some good reasons, because for me, I think that I've thought this through quite well, and maybe I'm completely wrong. But for me, I think that if you play methodically, carefully, and think out the way that you're playing the game, then you should benefit from that. And with War Thunder's current situation, it's just not happening. And for me, that's where a majority of the frustration comes from. So, what about planes that are directly in front of you? Well, maybe you could give them an extra bit of spotting, maybe five, six, or seven kilometers in front of you, because if you were to do a 180 degree turn and your enemy was three kilometers around, uh, by the time you turned around, that basically sort of nullifies the benefits that I was talking about. So maybe we could throw in that as well. I would absolutely love to see these things tested on a dev server or on an event or something like that. 
I have been told by Gaijin developers that they need numbers, and if you want numbers, maybe throw it on the live server for a week and give it a test. Maybe talk to the community about it. Give the community some feedback. Give them some some words, like talk to the community. Communication is extremely important with this, and Gaijin seems to be letting the ball down a couple of times every year. So, I mentioned missile spotting, and this is something that I have had a lot of conversations with a few people about, uh, particularly Koala. Koala is one of those people that likes the more historical aspect of the game. He plays the game more for the sort of, not, not for the sim type part, but he's certainly more interested in the vehicles and the history and the real life implications. For me, this is a, a sort of game pri in, in its primary focus, and in its secondary focus, it is a history-based MMO. So that's the way I see things, and Koala sees things the opposite way. So we've been having some discussions about the spotting system for missiles. And for me, I suggested at first to just have the missile perma-spotted all the way to its target. So from, from its launch all the way to it either blowing up or either to it uh, connecting to its target. Now, Koala said that this gives AIM 7Es a real shit time because basically they're spotted and what are you going to do? Just, you know, dodge the AIM 7 because it's so far away and it only pulls 16 Gs. It would reduce the efficiency or the efficacy of the AIM 7E. And you know what? I think he's kind of right. So, what I would suggest, I have modified my uh, suggestion to suggest that perhaps these particular missiles could be spotted while they're burning. And then when they're not burning, when they're gliding, they just sort of pulse on. So you see the the marker, and then it disappears. And then you see the marker, and then it disappears. And then you see the marker, and it disappears. And this way, you would have to still be paying attention to where the missile is. So for example, if uh, you're engaging multiple enemies, and you don't see a missile, then that's your fault, because you put yourself in a situation where you can potentially be attacked by multiple enemies but if you are you know well aware of your surroundings you can potentially see this missile and maybe for a few seconds that'll give you enough time to evade or to, to pull away and for me I think that's a nice middle ground let me know what you think uh, especially Koala because Koala is a is a good uh, good buddy of mine and I don't want to you know I, I want to find a solution that is right in the middle there so the next one is Airfield AA the surface to air missiles were recently added, and to be honest, nothing's changed. Absolutely nothing's changed. They're still ridiculously unreliable, so they're completely fatal if they want to be, and they're completely inert when they want to be as well. So I personally just, I'm really, really frustrated with that. I would really love to see the implementation of a suggestion that I made in a video a few, or oh, it might be like six months ago now. I was very proud of that video, and it'll be in the uh, link in the description below. Basically, I suggest that there's a collection of surface-to-air missiles and guns, which there is at the moment. You have Rolands and uh, the uh, M247s, but in this case, you have a timer-based system. Instead of just putting new things in and hoping for the best and leaving the same old system for their firing in, in place. Instead, you put a timer so that when the player wants to go back and land, they can. So you can have like five minutes, for example, where the plane is able to go back to base and go land, repair, rearm, and then get back up in the air. And then after that, the AA switches off for, say, five minutes. And then the player comes back to camp their airfield, but, you know, there's no defense. And that would simulate either replenishing ammunition or, you know, changing out tubes or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. What I would like to see is a definite. I would like to see less RNG when it comes to airfield AA. I think that is the main point of what I'm getting at. Less RNG, more certainty, and of course, maybe this timer could be displayed above the airfield. And it says, like rearming in, I don't know, five minutes, or, or whatever the number wants to be. We can we can work out minutia in the comments below, just like usual. But I think Airfield AA needs to be more certain. It doesn't need to change, because the old FLAC AA was good enough. It worked, but it wasn't certain enough, and that's where the issue is. 
If it becomes super certain that you are absolutely going to die if someone flies over the airfield once, then sure, so be it. As long as there is an opportunity to kill campers, because then you get the best of both worlds, and I love getting the best of both worlds. I love finding that middle ground, and I think you should as well. So, our final thing that I would like to discuss about top tier is the flare missile dynamic. That is, the interaction of flares with missiles. Now, R60s and AIM-9Js were not the best at avoiding flares, and I think that that is a fair thing to have in the game. We have flares, we have chaff, and I think that they should be, at some point, usable. However, I don't think that flares should be a get-out-of-jail-free card, and what I mean by that is, if you mess up, for example, if you're turning and burning and you're at low speed, you shouldn't be able to just spam some flares and get out of it. To me, I think that that's a little bit wrong, and I think it should change a little bit. But how, Mr. Spitfire? How do we change this? Now, I think the simple thing is to reduce the effectiveness of flares. I think that that is the key. Because with those flares, you get that uh, ability to just get out of jail free, like I said. And if we're going to get R60Ms or more powerful air-to-air -air missiles that are sort of ignoring flares and, and things like that, there are there is technology like that. And I think that's um, like an infrared or a visual tracking device in the actual seeker head instead of just an infrared one. Um, I think that, you know, that would be cool. But at the same time, you have to figure out or you have to focus on the here and now. War Thunder currently is not in a great place because at the end of the day, the person with more flares is the one that's going to win. And the nation at the moment that has the most flares is the US. And you can tell that it is absolutely happening for the Americans and the Russians are just getting stomped. And when one side gets stomped, you end up with one-sided battles all the time, which is not fun. Trust me, I get bored of winning and so will you. But on the other side of that, you've got now people who are no longer going to queue for a match because I'm sick of getting smashed, so why should I play my Russians when I can just join the Americans and smash them? For me, this is the number one way to kill a game mode, by making matches one-sided, and to do that, I think we have to put the history aside a little bit and just make these flares a little bit less potent. Alternatively, I have been told by a subscriber that there are different types of flares with different amounts of uh, particles or materials, uh, hotter flares and duller flares, and the Russians at some point, I think on the MiG-23 MLD, I'm not really sure had some really nice and bright flares, so maybe that could be a better middle ground? I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments section below because this is, like I said, not my strong point. History side, not my strong point, but gameplay side, I think I have a bit of experience there to back me up. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you can understand where I'm coming from with Jets. For me, I really see this as the pinnacle of War Thunder, and for being the pinnacle, it should probably be the most competitive, as well as being sort of the, the most fun. And for me, at the moment, it's really stressful, and it's really hard. So I would love to see Jets just get better, and I really hope that Gaijin just takes this in and has a look at it, maybe takes some of the advice, and maybe explains to me why I'm wrong. Because I would love to know if I'm wrong, and if I am, I would love to be correct. But ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate. Check out air models in the description below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.